Thank you. It's, uh, as you can imagine, being a Spanish, uh, having a Cuban wife, and living in United Arab Emirates, it's always a pleasure to be in Miami. <laughs> so first of all, now that uh, you know something uh, about me, uh, I would like to know something about you. How many of you work in an EPC? Please raise your hand. Hmm. And how many of you know what an EPC is? OK, good. So the first conclusion about this uh, is that uh, we are missing an important player today here. Because uh, I will try to describe during the next uh, 30 minutes uh, what's the role of the EPCs and how the EPCs, the engineering, procurement, and construction companies, have a key role in the industrial cybersecurity in how to improve uh, our security posture. And for that, I will use uh, an example of a, um, a movie, an old movie, by the way, some sound should be uh, sounding right now, about the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. In this movie, there are three men that know where some goal is hidden. One of them knows that, uh, what cemetery it's in. The other one knows which grave, and the last one knows that it exists. And that's basically something similar to what's happening to our industrial cybersecurity ecosystem. Because I think that most of us, at least the ones that uh, are attending today to this conference, know that the goal, our goal, is to inject cybersecurity in all of our industrial infrastructures, in our industrial infrastructure life cycle. From the very beginning, from the conceptual design, the initial specifications, including what we need and what we want, uh, through the front engineering and the detail engineering, uh, specifically designing the proper architectures and the solutions that we need, uh, including cybersecurity in the procurement language, and of course, testing how these is being implemented through the factory acceptance testing, through the integrated factory acceptance testing, the site acceptance testing, and all everything. This is a challenge, of course. And especially if we look at the duration. Uh, I will focus in this presentation on big industrial projects, on what it's called mega projects. So uh, the uh, general duration for these stages, for the requirements, usually in these projects takes between six months and one year, sometimes more than that, two years. The design phase may take until probably up to two years, two, three years. And the construction depends on the uh, industrial infrastructure, but for sure will take more than two years, three years, four years. So even assuming that the critical infrastructure, that, that the industrial company is doing the right thing, that is basically requiring cybersecurity at the very beginning of the project, from that time to the time that we are commissioning the infrastructure will pass something like six, seven, eight years, nine years. So as you can imagine, even those requirements and the solutions and the threat landscape is changing a lot during these years. So the, we will be facing important challenges on how to adapt during this project. And we know where the goal is, but we don't really know who's the good, who's the bad, or who's the ugly in, in this industrial cybersecurity ecosystem. And let me try to describe uh, and explain which are the main players for that. Of course, we have the governments, and governments want to protect the critical infrastructure and the essential services for the society, and usually publish regulations and require cybersecurity to the critical infrastructure, to the different sectors. And then, industrial companies and critical infrastructures when they want to build a new industrial plan or to include cybersecurity in their infrastructures, they usually hire the EPCs, the engineering, procurement, and construction companies. These companies execute the whole project as a turnkey project, including everything. I will talk about this later. But basically, for that, they hire additional players. Basically, they manage and they work with industrial vendors, they manage and they hire uh, different system integrators to integrate the solutions. Also, the cyber security and IT vendors and a bunch of third parties in these projects. So we are talking about projects six, seven, eight, nine years with a lot of different players with different objectives. And honestly, at this time of representation, I, can, uh, I cannot say who can be the good, 
who can be the bad or who can be the ugly in this ecosystem. I'm, pro I'm sure that you probably cannot do that either. So let me focus now on the EPCs. As I already mentioned, EPCs execute industrial mega projects as turnkey projects for the industrial companies. And this includes everything. I'm simplifying here this, uh, uh, this relationship because sometimes there is an additional player between the industrial company and the EPC that is the PMC, the Project Management Consultant, that is an independent, independent player that oversees how the EPC is executing the work. But basically, EPCs include everything in this project, from the engineering, the procurement, the construction, the implementation of technologies, system integration, testing, and of course, all the solutions, automation, instrumentation, piping, safety, OT, IT, cybersecurity, everything. They have to deal with everything. And they have to manage all of the vendors, industrial vendors, cybersecurity vendors, third party vendors. And I'm sure that uh, you know a lot of EPCs. Here I'm representing as an example some of the main EPCs in the oil and gas sector. And as you can see, these are not the small companies, just the opposite. These are some of the biggest companies in the world, with more than 1,000 employees and a lot of millions of revenue. So there are companies with uh, strong capabilities on automation, on piping, on industrial processes, but I anticipate that the reality these days is that they lack of the right capabilities on cybersecurity, generally speaking. Usually, we talk about the interdependencies of the different sectors, oil and gas, water, transport, etc. But uh, I want to highlight here that EPCs play a crucial role and the impact of insufficient cybersecurity in their projects is now affecting and can be devastating to the protection of our critical infrastructures uh, to our national security. Because they are the ones that are building, they, that are designing and constructing the oil and gas infrastructure, the substations, the water, the salination plants, everything. And Yes, the asset owners are requiring cybersecurity, but sometimes the way that EPCs are addressing these requirements are not uh, the right way. So uh, let me, now that we know something about the EPCs, let me share with you what's the reality. What are the challenges that they, as business, as companies, are facing these days? First of all, they have important technical uh, challenges, because uh, we have talked a, lo about, uh, a lot about the convergence about IT and OT, and this is new for them, because they are accustomed and have a strong capabilities on some of the topics, but they are lacking of important ones on the others. Of course, uh, the cost is an important challenge for them, because they manage the projects as lump sum projects, in other words, as fixed price. They are awarded with a project, for this amount of money, and they have to execute the project within this budget. The problem with that is that due to their lack of uh, knowledge and capabilities on cybersecurity, sometimes they agree to some requirements that then, later on, they discover that the, there are some deviations of the scope. And of course, the quality is also a challenge because they are managing a lot of different locations, they are managing different providers, and again, due to the lack of uh, cybersecurity capabilities, sometimes they cannot differentiate about providers, industrial cybersecurity service providers. Another challenge is the schedule. The schedules these days for the APCs are more tiny than they were in the past. They are shorter in time. So they are very uh, worried and they have concerns about the cybersecurity activities because the cybersecurity activities are new activities that they don't know and they are afraid that some delays uh, can happen due to those, uh, those activities. Of course, the size of the projects, I will talk much more about this in the next slides, is one of the biggest challenges, because they are managing big, really big projects where the cybersecurity is only a small part, a small part of the project, but the impact of cybersecurity is very big in the project. Safety, as you can imagine, Managing uh, safety of more than 25,000 people in this project, it's very difficult. But they have a strong capabilities on safety. The problem comes with the convergence between the cyber and the physical world. So they have also to manage these things, and this is something new for them. 
one more thing that they have to deal with is the competition. Usually, these mega projects are awarded to an EPC or a consortium of EPCs. Um, what uh, today is a partner for the EPC in the next project will be a competitor. So some of the challenges that, that they have to face is to how to share only the minimum information with his partner or their partner, because in the next project probably they will have a, a new competitor for that. And the last but not least is the capabilities. They have a strong capabilities in a lot of topics, but unfortunately, most of them, they lack of the proper cybersecurity skill sets uh, and, and, and knowledge. So summarizing about the APCs, they are facing a lot of challenges in their business. Cybersecurity challenges are new for them, and they need to adapt now to this reality, to the evolving uh, threat landscape, to the new regulations coming for cybersecurity, to the certifications, as we have been talked in the previous uh, presentations, and they need to build a new value proposition to empower their business. So it's key for them, but they are not here, most of them, <laughs> to address the cybersecurity challenges. So now that we know how an EPC uh, is working and what are the challenges, let me share with you how a real MIA project looks like. Usually, and this is based on a real project that uh, I'm working on, it's an eight years project with more than $3.5 billion budget. It's good. Looks good for cybersecurity, right? In the design uh, stage, it has been uh, used more than 4 million man hours, and more than 50,000 design drawings have been produced. And what about the construction? More than 20 million man hours with 10,000 workers have produced an infrastructure that is 66,000 tons in weight with more than 6,000 6, valves and more than 250 kilometers of piping, more than, more than 225 kilometers of cable. Big numbers, impressive. At least for me, first time that I started to work with this mega project, I was really impressed. But I am much more impressed for the next number that I will share with you. Based on some analysis that we have done, 64% of these mega projects are facing cost overruns. 73% of these mega projects are reporting schedule delays. And all of them are facing budget overruns. So as you can imagine, if you are an EPC, you are dealing with really big challenges. And then we are coming, and you asset owners are coming, with new challenges, with cybersecurity, something really new. So uh, how cybersecurity looks like in this uh, real mega project? I told you that I'm coming from Abu Dhabi. So let's assume that this, the budget of the project is like the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, in Dubai. OK? So how do you think? the cybersecurity budget will be. Maybe like the Trump Tower, like the Petronas Towers, this theater. Any idea? Cybersecurity budget looks like that. Can you see that? No? It's there. It's here. <laughs> but what I, I wanted to share with you is that this representation is oversized to, to be visible. The reality is that cybersecurity is a really, really small part of these mega projects from the budget perspective. But the impact of cybersecurity in these projects can be devastating. And uh, based on some uh, safety analysis and cyber safety analysis, and I'm sure that you are aware of uh, some of these studies, cybersecurity should be taken more seriously from the very beginning of the project, and I will try to explain uh, uh, something else about that. For the uh, sound technician, I would appreciate if you can activate the sound in the, in the slides. So uh, from this small piece of war that is the cybersecurity against the Bush Khalifa, what are the, the things that usually are included in this scope of work for cybersecurity? Basically, the activities are focused on the detail engineering. So basically, uh, reviewing the architecture, doing a risk assessment or cybersecurity assessment, all of the drawings, of the detail, design, or the front uh, uh, 
design, engineering, everything. And then testing the capabilities implemented during the FAT, during the integrated FAT and SAT. And these are the numbers that reflect a real uh, cybersecurity study for these mega projects. Usually we are talking about about 70, I'm talking about oil and gas here, about 70 uh, main systems. From them, four are the, uh, uh, part of the integrated control safety system, the DCS, CSD, foreign gas. Six, more or less, the electrical systems, the power management systems, 20 telecom systems, and 40 ancillary systems. I call, I, uh, I tell, I call ancillary systems those systems that are something like uh, uh, auxiliary to support some of the projects. All of these systems, at the end, are coming from 20 industrial vendors. Four of them are some of the ones that we have here, that have been working a lot during the last years to have a strong capabilities on cybersecurity, to have good solutions, and to have good approaches. But honestly, the 16 uh, other are really small industrial vendors, some from Italy, from Spain, from different countries, that the reality of these industrial vendors is completely different from the ones that you know, or the, from the big ones. Sometimes they don't have a cybersecurity guy. So when you come to them with the results of a risk assessment or a cybersecurity assessment and ask them about the capabilities that their solution, their approach, their architecture, or the device is providing, they don't know. They don't understand you. So it's a big challenge. And talking about the, the more the, the technical part, we are talking about more than 1,000 IP addresses, more than 600 documents to be reviewed from the cybersecurity perspective, and more than 20,000 pages. So let me now talk about how this li look like uh, during the life of the project. What I have tried to represent here is how the scope of work for the cybersecurity evolves during the project. So at the very beginning, and we are talking about seven years ago, the industrial company issues an RFP requiring a number of things for cybersecurity. Then the EPC replies to uh, that RFP, understanding, I would not say maliciously, but understanding the different scope of work. That is the red one that you can see there. Okay? But contractually, they, EPC, agreed to the original scope of work of the industrial company. Why? Because they really didn't understand this, uh, this uh, scope of work. And of course, EPC asked the industrial vendor to provide the solutions that they understood that they had to provide. The project advanced during five, six years, and then they involved an industrial cybersecurity independent uh, advisor to do these uh, cybersecurity activities. And what happens is that we discover that most of the things that the industrial company is requiring from the cybersecurity perspective are not being included. So they start a negotiation on how to adapt the scope of work. So the EPC needs to start growing their original scope of work to comply with the original scope of work of the industrial company. And sometimes the industrial company decreases a little bit because based on the risk and the investment, maybe it doesn't make sense to include some of the activities. Of course, the industrial vendor today, especially the big ones, are ready to reply to that, to respond in a good way. So tell me what you need, I will give you what I have. Uh, this, at the end of the project, as you can see, uh, gives an important scope deviation for the APC. And this has important financial impacts for the, for the company. So my question, um, I have a, a dupe, if, if uh, EPCs, industrial vendors, and industrial companies can work together to improve their protection. Because basically, industrial companies want the infrastructure to be secure. EPCs want to, the project to be closed. And basically, the industrial vendors want to know what the, the others want, really want, to reply and, and to offer the solutions that they have. So let me try uh, to explain to you some of my advice. First of all, all it starts by harnessing collaboration, coordination, and commitment. It's completely important to build trust and confidence-based relationships between these three players. And my advice is to establish an industria, industrial cybersecurity work group or committee during the whole life of the project. Because in, in, in this way, we will include relevant stakeholders in the project for the cybersecurity, and we will address 
things that have to be addressed from the very beginning. What should not happen is that, as happened to me in some project, that the EPCs, the industrial company, and the industrial vendors sit together for the first time in the project to talk about cybersecurity six years after the beginning of the project. Honestly. First time on this mega project, eight, nine years mega project, for the three players to sit together to talk about cybersecurity six years from the beginning. Of course, then the scope deviations appear. What about DPCs? I already mentioned and shared with you at the very beginning. I think that they lack of the right cybersecurity skill sets and capabilities, and they need them and they need it now. So first, I think that they should build an, their industrial cybersecurity capabilities because uh, this will uh, strengthen their offering and will help them understand the reality of the scope of wars and the reality of the needs of their clients. And as important as building their own industrial cybersecurity capabilities is to integrate them with their existing auto uh, capabilities about automation, safety, etc. And another thing that they should do is establish a permanent industrial cybersecurity role for each project. It's completely needed because uh, basically different things are appearing uh, as uh, the project advances, and it's very important to have a clear accountability of the cybersecurity throughout the project lifecycle. So, first, build industrial cybersecurity capabilities and integrate them with uh, their existing capabilities about safety, automation, etc. And second, establish a permanent role for industrial cybersecurity in its project. What about industrial companies? They have to do what I think that most of them are starting to do. Basically, ensuring that cybersecurity is injected and properly managed throughout all the infrastructure lifecycle. So basically, finding the goal that we are looking for in all of the infrastructure lifecycle. And based on this discussion and what I have shared with you, uh, you can see that there are very complex relationships, multiple supply chains, uh, and really deep supply chains and completely different objectives. So my advice is that an independent industrial cybersecurity trusted uh, contractor should uh, help them to come together and to work together and to look at the project in a similar way that the PNC, the project management consultant, is doing from the overall project from the cybersecurity part. This uh, independent trusted contractor so that as a catalyst and oversees the cybersecurity activities throughout the whole life cycle of the project, should manage the interfaces with the key stakeholders, reduce project and implementation risk, and at the end, this would empower the APC business and would uh, put a better security posture for the industrial company. So it benefits for all of the players. Based on this, I started the presentation talking about who's the good, who can be the bad, and who can be the ugly. And I would uh, ask you, who, who, is the, who is who here? Who is the good, who's the bad for you, and who's the ugly? But the reality is that D doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's the good, because we are not looking for uh, guilties. We are looking for solutions, and the only way to uh, advance and to protect our infrastructures is to come together, to work together, to collaborate, to be coordinated, and to establish commitment between all of them. And my advice is that you should not wait until next project, you should not wait until uh, next week, and you should start in tonight's party. So go for it. Thank you so much.